The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami on December 20th, 1983 in New Orleans, Louisiana. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 2, Verse 19. Devaki then kept within herself the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the foundation of the entire cosmos. But because she was under arrest in the house of Kanksha, she was like the flames of a fire covered by the walls of a pot, or like a person who has knowledge but cannot distribute it to the world for the benefit of society. Translation. Devaki then kept within herself the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the, cause of all causes. the foundation of the entire cosmos. But because she was under arrest, in the house of Kansa, in the house of Kansa, she was like the flames of a fire. She was like the flames of a fire covered by the walls of a pot. Covered by the walls of a pot. Or like a person who has knowledge, or like a person who has knowledge, but cannot distribute it to the world. But cannot distribute it to the world for the benefit of human society. For the benefit of human society. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this verse, the word jnana kala is most significant. Knowledge is meant for distribution. Although there is already much scientific knowledge, whenever scientists or philosophers awaken to a particular type of knowledge, they try to distribute it throughout the world. For otherwise, the knowledge gradually dries up and no one benefits from it. India has the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, but unfortunately for some reason or other, this sublime knowledge of the science of God was not distributed throughout the world, although it is meant for all of human society. Therefore, Krishna himself appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and ordered all Indians to take up the cause of distributing the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world. Jare dekho tare ko ho Krishna upodesh Amaragya e guru hoya taro e desh Quote, instruct everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. Unquote. From Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 7, 20, excuse me, 7, chapter, verse 128. Although India has the sublime knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, 
Indians have not done their proper duty of distributing it. Now, therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement has been set up to distribute this knowledge as it is, without distortion. Although previously there were attempts to distribute the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, these attempts involved distortion and compromise with mundane knowledge. But in the Krishna consciousness movement, without mundane compromises, now is distributing Bhagavad Gita as it is, and people are deriving the benefits of awakening to Krishna consciousness and becoming devotees of Lord Krishna. Therefore, the proper distribution of knowledge has begun, by which not only will the whole world benefit, but India's glory will be magnified in human society. Comes to try to arrest Krishna consciousness within his house, Bhojendra Gehe, with the result that Kamsa, with all his opulences, was later vanquished. Similarly, the real knowledge of Bhagavad Gita has been choked by unscrupulous Indian leaders, with the result that Indians' culture and the knowledge of the Supreme were being lost. Now, however, however because Krishna consciousness is spreading, the proper use of Bhagavad Gita is being attempted. Thus ends the translation of purport by His Divine Grace Shila Avoy Charan Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 2, Verse 19, in the matter of the prayers by the demigods. Here in the end of the uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada explains why Indian culture has fallen uh, down from its... Uh, it used to be the richest culture in the world. Actually, Christopher Columbus was only looking for a short trade route to India when he stumbled across America. Because India was where all the gold, the spices, the fine cloth, silk, everything that was uh, valuable was uh, coming from India. But then Hawaii, in later day, India has uh, fallen down. The secret here is given that because they choked up, because they choked up the Bhagavad Gita, actually there were some leaders in India, the Brahmanas, they said that if any Indian went across the ocean, they lose their their Hindu Dharma, whatever you want to call it, they lose their religion. That somehow the religion would vanquish simply by crossing over a body of water. And up to the time of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. People believe that. Ramakrishna's disciple Vivekananda was practically the first Indian to ever leave India. And this type of uh, mythology or type of uh, superstition they had uh, preached. And as a result, no one would preach abroad and no one would preach to the non Hindus, to the people who weren't born. So although the Bhagavad Gita is not a sectarian science, it's a universal science of God consciousness, self-realization, a postgraduate course for all religions and cultures, but due to some very uh, bigoted, limited view, this was never uh, spread before to the other countries, to the other parts of the world. Lord Chaitanya, he came and said, Prativiti Ache Jatunagaradi Gram Sadavatra Pachar Vaivi Morna. That in every town and village throughout the whole world, my message is going to be spread, going to be sung. So, actually, by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he started the Sankirtan movement. Now, someone might say that, well, Lord Chaitanya started the Sankirtan movement in India. But then, uh, how can we understand uh, that, uh, why didn't he spread it throughout the whole world, or how can we understand that he's actually Krishna? So many questions could come up. So, just like Krishna, he starts the entire universe simply by setting it off in motion. And like a domino series, everything one after another manifests. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya, in Navadip, he only chanted Hare Krishna. And in India. But that set off the entire movement into motion. And Prabhupada has explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that now by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya this Krishna conscious movement has brought Lord Chaitanya's message all over the entire world 
And it's a duty of every disciple, of every follower of the Hare Krishna movement to try to expand it more and more. And that eventually this movement is going to spread over the entire universe, even onto other planets all over the entire universe, from the Hare Krishna movement here. So already there are some evidences that preachers are already working in other planets, although we don't have all the evidence, but uh, our previous acharyas mentioned that their plan was to go to the other planets as soon as they finish their business here. So they may already be there, starting the preaching. And from here also, the preaching is going to expand all over the universe. So, coming back to this verse where Devaki is sitting in the, uh, the uh, prison of her brother, Kamsha. And she's carrying Krishna in her. So she's become very beautiful, very effulgent. Similarly, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in Navadvip in Mayapur, then uh, he was in the uh, inside of uh, Sachi, and she also became so beautiful. And the different demigods also came and offered her prayers. And when he uh, took his appearance, then demigods and demigoddesses from the higher planets they came in disguise as uh, village men and women just to see Lord Chaitanya, offering him gifts, offering. Uh, various uh, presentations to Nanda, uh, excuse me, to Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi. Actually the pastimes are parallel. The difference is that in the Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming as a devotee. So he's keeping his identity uh, hidden. Where Krishna is coming directly as Swayam Bhagavan, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the other difference is that here Kamsa is trying to kill Krishna and Krishna was going to kill Kamsa. But in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's past time, Lord Chaitanya doesn't kill the opponents, but rather he gives them pure love for Godhead and he in this way kills their demonic nature. He is so powerful that he gives them love for Krishna and makes them, instead of inimical against Krishna, makes them pure devotees. So that is the unique and wonderful nature of Chi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That uh, therefore he is described as Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya. What a Krishna uh, Namo That actually Lord Chaitanya is more merciful even than Krishna. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, actually more merciful than Krishna. Krishna, he killed. Kamsa, and Kamsa got moksha, got liberation. Killed so many demons and most of them got liberation. Some also could achieve by kunta. Liberation, most of them got was simply liberation called saujya mukti, which is merging into the effulgence of the Brahman, or into the body of Krishna. They don't maintain their individual uh, realization. Only a few like Bhutana and other one or two they were able to achieve by kunta because of the way that they went because Putana gave her own breast with poison on it to Krishna but then Krishna took it well since I sucked the breast she's my mother even though he had to kill her because he had poison on her breast but Krishna he reciprocated since I sucked your breast you can be my mother in the spiritual world it's a very rare benediction but most of them they didn't get uh, that benediction, they were inimical, they simply got, uh, they thought they themselves were God, independent. So in the impersonal realization one thinks that one is the Brahman and one is God, so he gave them that benediction. But here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so kind, more merciful because he gave them love for Krishna. He actually gave them pure Krishna consciousness, which is much greater than these other liberations. So now that we have this opportunity of taking part in the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we should take advantage of it. As long as Lord Chaitanya's movement is here on this planet, you see, we have this opportunity to go back to Krishna and to achieve this highest perfection. We should take advantage of it. Don't leave the opportunity hidden or pass it by. 
we should take the maximum benefit from it. Actually, even if people take a little practice of chanting, they get such a great benefit. I was reading in one of the articles that recently published about us, some uh, Dallas uh, correspondent, he had uh, read the chant and be happy. So he wrote up his experience in the Dallas uh, newspaper, how he was standing on the street and somebody came up to him and told him that uh, you should turn or burn, that God is holding you up like a fly over the, over the furnace and if you don't uh, immediately take uh, God in your heart, he's going to throw you in the fire and you're burnt to a crisp. Then uh, some Hare Krishna devotee came up and handed him a chant and be happy. So in, in uh, comparison, he said, well, let me read this. And then he read it and then he saw that you could chant Hare Krishna even though you didn't shave up. You could chant Hare Krishna even without being a vegetarian and going through so many rituals. But basically, even in India, the people are very much afraid of giving up their sense gratification. They know that if you become a pure devotee of Krishna, you become so mad after Krishna that you forget about so many material attachments. They know that. So they are thinking that uh, if a person becomes so much in love with Krishna, is so happy that even material things become insignificant. So, it's not that it's... Uh, but they're looking at it from the very attached point of view. I don't want to give up my family attachment or my sense gratification attachment or my business attachment or my society attachment or any of these attachments. So therefore, let me not chant Hare Krishna or be part of the Hare Krishna movement except at a very great distance. I might give them a donation or something. This is the Indian point of view. Many people are very afraid of becoming intimately connected. One uh, family, their son became a devotee, they became very upset. They said, listen, you can come to the temple and do everything, but you shouldn't become a full temple. They have a respect. It's just that they're afraid themselves of losing any form of sense gratification. All these people are bewildered. If they're actually sincere about becoming happy, and if progressively, step by step, they're feeling more and more happy, and if ultimately that happiness means that actually they're mad after Krishna, if that's the highest happiness, then where's the problem? But of course, some people are not really intelligent, so they try to avoid to do attachments. That's why it's a Lord Chaitanya's followers would be the intelligent people. That the very intelligent people, they'll be able to, they'll join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. But at least everyone, if they start to take up the chanting, just like that writer said so, Anybody can chant, you don't have to change your lifestyle or anything. I was interviewed also by one uh, radio uh, interviewer here in the West. And uh, I suggested, why don't you try meditating and chanting Hare Krishna? They said, well, I don't want to shave my head. Or this. And I said, no, you can chant without doing all these things. You can chant anytime, any place. Really? Well, if that's so, then I'm all interested. I mean, people haven't really understood that anybody can chant Hare Krishna. And actually the people who are living in our temples, they're very advanced. They're yogis. They're people who want to actually achieve perfection in this life. But everyone can begin on the path of perfection by chanting. Basically the Namahata movement, which has been uh, stated as the folk movement here in the West, is to get everyone in their own houses, in their own villages, and towns, and cities, to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada, he said that there's no reason why in every country, why uh, every country of the world, in every place in the world, that every family can chant Hare Krishna uh, every day. There's no reason why somebody can't chant Hare Krishna in their house. It simply is a question of uh, promoting it and letting people know about this chanting of Hare Krishna. Those who are a little broad-minded, even a little inquisitive, they can try it. And by chanting, if they uh, get even a fraction, just a little bit of chanting, they'll be able to experience the most sublime change in their lives. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
So basically now, due to their fear, to their paranoia, to their prejudices, they're trying to keep this Hare Krishna mantra hidden. They're not able to see the beauty of it. Just like Devaki was having uh, such a great beauty, but due to Kamsa keeping her locked up in the prison, no one could see. So somehow or another, we have to break free from this uh, prison, which uh, the media and different uh, paranoid people have placed, whereby the, na- the normal, well, not the normal, the uh, common person is not able to take the advantage and see what is the real beauty of this Hare Krishna mantra. So that is only possible by all of you taking up the uh, the uh, the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and requesting everyone from house to house, from person to person, to try and take up the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Any question? Yes. Yes. Can they can they attain total complete liberation without being married? Without being married. Yes, sir. Uh, there's no such uh, stipulation that that uh, liberation is uh, dependent upon getting married, but. Uh, it has been uh, recommended very strongly that uh, women should be married. But as far as being, uh, what if a girl dies when she's 12 or something? I mean, it's, not, it's not a lean on the soul that you have to be married to go back to Godhead. It's a question of what consciousness you're in when you leave your body. If you are in Krishna consciousness, you go back to Godhead. In a general uh, sadhana, practice of devotional service, it's uh, conducive for women to be married and have a Krishna conscious husband. If the husband's not Krishna conscious, then there's a problem. Actually, the husband should be Krishna conscious and the wife should be Krishna conscious. And this way, they give each other association. I can elaborate, but it's a little short of the time right now. But it's not... Uh, Intention on going back to Godhead per se. That is uh, not contingent on any material thing. It's contingent on chanting Hare Krishna, serving the spiritual master, following his instructions. Hare Krishna. Yes, Bhaktivinoda? Uh, you stated earlier that uh, Hare Krishna India was started on other planets. You said that we had no evidence of what was the end. Well, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, one day he was in the morning walk and looked up and said, there's so many uh, Krishna Bhagya Mukhas, there's so many materialistic uh, people, uh, Krishna forgetful people on the moon planet. He said that uh, we have to go there and preach to them, bring them back to Krishna time. Going to the Vedas, there are inhabitants in all the planets, but they don't all live on the same vibrational level, the same consciousness level, or the same. They all live on different levels. That's why in one uh, planet they may be uh, on a subtle beings, on another level altogether. In one planet there may be earthly beings, but on a different, complete metabolism and situation. Just like on this planet, you have, if you dig in the earth, you find there are worms. You find all kinds of things. You find that plants are not breathing oxygen, they're breathing carbon dioxide. You find so many different uh, things going on, even on this planet, you know, whether it's the water or the earth or the air, everywhere you'll find some form of living entity. So there's a verse saying that living entities are everywhere, including in the fire, including in the other, all the different planets, there are different living entities. Even above the earth in outer space, there are different subtle levels with different type of like, well, here we might call it ghosts or something, but there are different type of creatures, not, not necessarily ghosts, but other subtle beings on all the different levels, subtle or gross, whatever, but there are living entities everywhere. So on the moon planet, is actually this considered to be a higher spiritual level or material level rather than, uh, than the earth planet. 
When the sun is considered higher, the other, even some other planets are considered lower. But uh, in terms of their basic development of consciousness, the earth is, this earth planet is considered in the middle. So we eventually want to preach in all those different planets, wherever there are people that could be Krishna conscious. Since Bhakti Siddhanta Zitaka expressed about going to the moon planet, there's every uh, chance that already the preaching has begun on other planets. But that we don't have the evidence yet which planet we went to if we stayed in this universe, where the preaching. But Prabhupada said in uh, the Chaitanya Charitamrita that this movement is to spread all over this planet and then all over the universe. Which planet do you want to live in next? Next door, next door neighbor. <laughs> Crazy so work on this one first. <laughs> one more question. They still talk about the astronaut going to the moon and all this. Just recently, they said astronaut. Have you seen it? No, I didn't see that. No. So Are you there? there? No. <laughs> well, don't they say seeing is believing? Right. <laughs> They have to make their own feeling of people who they went to the moon, you know. How can they make people on feeling when they went to the moon and keep on collecting all the money for this and that? It's proper. <coughs> what they do or they don't do, the point is we just don't believe everything we read in the paper. And they, whether they go or even if they did go, what's the, what was the value of it? What was the benefit? $28,000 billion or something like that was spent on that program. Who was the benefit? I was reading. I was reading from the Bible time. Five two that Shula Prabhupada stated that the moon was uh, a million miles closer than the sun, which makes it ninety four million miles away. They have to make possible for it. Well their distances are all worked up. We're constructing a big uh, model in uh, Mayapur and uh, the distances uh, that they're saying it's a whole other long discussion, but uh, we're doing a lot of research according to the Bible team. And there are a lot of things that they don't publish. Just like uh, we were trying to match up things with uh, the modern scientist's view, but you can't do it because the modern scientists don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> just like, and they cheat. They cheat like anything. Just like uh, this is uh, this is a society in Texas called All the Phenomena That Modern Science Can't Explain. And there they found that when you send radio waves, that there's a place just opposite from, uh, just uh, there's uh, two spots just opposite from each other. And when you send radio waves, nothing ever bounces back. There should be a planet there, but they can't see it. Things like that. And those two places match up exactly to Rahu and Ketu. But then they don't they don't tell anybody that, that they, they call it a black hole or something. They don't know, you know, they just make up some name and nobody knows what it is. So there's all kinds of things like that. You can't you can't you, they don't tell you all the things they find. If they see something it doesn't make sense with their theory, they just don't even tell anybody. Many of Nobel Prizes and different Pulitzer Prize, different whatever, they have to give them back. When later on someone finds out that they cheated. So it's very hard to try to match up. We tried to do this by matching up with their ideas. But then we found it so frustrating because as we try to match one thing and then we say, well, if you want to bend the truth, then you find out some more information from some magazine or something stating that they actually found this thing, but then they didn't reveal it for five years. And it's very hard to actually... So we were trying to... What we're going to do is we're going to present the Vedic uh, cosmology, not caring anything for the uh, what their ideas and showing the actually how things are going in such a unique way at our Mayapur temple that this is going to revolutionize the whole concept of uh, the astronomy. I just reading yesterday in the newspaper something about Galileo. They said he was a debauchee and he just uh, he stole his uh, disciples' uh, information and actually. So many uh, things were about, uh, were scandals about him, how he had caught cheating in certain things. And, but just they haven't figured out any other, any other uh, explanation for gravity. 
But actually, there's not such a thing as gravity per se. It's another type of force, but not what they think, just a force of mass. But these things we're going to explain. It's very technical, very scientific. And uh, there are people that are work working on this for the big Mayapur temple. Prabhupada wants that we put the whole universe within that temple. Hare Krishna. <laughs>